Hello, Mom! Were you just waiting for me? Hello, Melanie. Hello, Deb. Welcome, you guys. Thanks for coming in here and uh, watching our free Monday uh, card class. So today I'm going to be sharing with you guys the new online exclusive, the Ready Rhinos. I'm going to be sharing the bundle with you. I've got three super cute cards that I think you guys are going to love. Oh, good. I'm glad the notifications are working. Thank you for letting me know that, Melanie, because from my side, I can't see all that. And thank you so much for sharing, Melanie. You always got my back, girl. <laughs> so are you back from Florida? Are you still there? So um, we have got a lot of work done around here as far as getting stuff moved. Uh, we have been working on getting bigger furniture moved. I got dressers moved yesterday, or not dressers, I got um, bookshelves and stuff moved yesterday. Uh, this room in particular will be the last room that gets moved because it's my daughter's room. Hello, Peggy. And I don't want, um, I don't want to disrupt her day-to-day uh, -day routine. So her room will be the last room and of course my craft room. It has to be the last thing that gets moved so I can keep doing videos for you guys. Um, so not much is going on here in Stampin' Up. Uh, we do, hold on a second, I forgot to grab my flyers here. Um, I hope you guys got your cards submitted over in Pink Barn Stampers group. That is my private group where um, you guys submit your mystery stamping cards. So mystery stamping we did last Wednesday. It was on the 15th. It is posted here in um, my videos under uh, my Facebook page here. So you can scroll down and find that. It shows you exactly how to make the layout of a card. Um, now just know that everybody's card is going to be the same layout, but every card's going to be different because you guys can grab whatever paper you have on hand. This does not have to be Stampin' Up! exclusive, so please know that you can use any products that you already currently have. Um, just, I want you guys to know that. And so the giveaway for this week is going to be these um, polished dots. I don't know if you guys can see that because that glare is crazy. So they are just beautiful. So when you go over and you join Pink Barn Stampers group, I will let you in on that group. And there is where you will find the card that I made. So when you watch the video, you'll see the card that I got done making. Hello, Wendy. And uh, that's where you will see the instructions and everything on how to make it. You can also visit my blog, stampinthepinkbarn.com. There as well, hello Frida, hello Nancy, there as well you're going to see um, the mystery stamping. So across the tabs, if you see the mystery stamping, click that and it'll take you to March uh, mystery stamping so you can read all about what mystery stamping is. The video is also attached there as well. Hello Kay. Gosh, you guys, you guys are all just flooding in here. Welcome. Thank you guys for coming in here so much. Thank you so much for sharing, Peggy. I think I missed somebody else. I think I saw somebody. Oh, Miss Nancy, thank you so much for sharing. Um, 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 um. Oh, that's what I do have to show you. So at the end here, I have gotten so many um, cards from my team who have sent us, um, my family and my husband and myself, uh, a condolence card, the sympathy cards for my father-in-law's passing. So I want to show you guys such creativity that my team has and all of you guys have. Thank you, Kay, for sharing. And uh, so I will show you that at the end because I really want to get down to business and get these cards made from you. Hello, Miss Rhea. 
Yes, the, mo the move is going well, but it seems like it is being awfully slow. Um, and that's, that's nobody's fault. It seems like we should already be moved, but it seems like every time something like needs to be moved, then it's like, wait a minute, I need that here. So it's always hard towards the end of a move. And, and the thing is, is we, we don't have to have a big rush to be moved out of this house because it's ours. And so we're going to just sell it. So, uh, thank you, Wendy, for sharing. And so with that, it's kind of one of those things that like before in the past, when we were like renting, it always seemed like we had to be out so quick and, um, things just got very jumbled. I wasn't able to pack correctly, I guess you would say. Um, so since this house is ours and the other house is, um, ours, it's, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, we don't have to rush and I can go up there and I can get things put away and get things organized how they need to be um, before we just kind of like take everything up in one trip because I remember being an apartment liver and living in rental homes and stuff. Uh, it was always like everything was right on the U-Haul at one time and then everything just got unpacked and then it was like, oh my gosh, it was so overwhelming. Granted, it got unpacked and it got done, but... This way, things are just getting done and moved. And I mean, the other thing is, is we're waiting for internet to get in up there because the internet is even worse than what it is here. Um, so I have to have good internet up there to be able to bring you guys these videos. And so I don't want to move and then be unprepared. Um, we're also waiting for the water line. Um, they already came in and they put in the, the new meter. So that's cool, but now we have to dig a trench because the city will not do that. We have to do that ourselves. So we have to dig a trench from the new uh, meter to the existing line that is connected to the old meter. So that takes time and it is not easy digging in the dirt up there because it is very rocky up at my um, parents' uh, property. So, I mean, it'll all work out. It's going to happen and we are getting closer and closer to it happening. So, you know, it just is what it is. Hello, Noreen. But uh, yeah, it is, it's coming along and um, hopefully we, you know, and then there for a couple of days, we had rain a couple of days. So when my husband had the days off, he was anticipating moving a bunch of stuff, but then it rained. Well, I'm not gonna have my stuff get all wet. Um, so that always kind of takes a toll on things and slows things down, but you know, we're getting there. So, um, I'm assuming, uh, coming up here within the next couple of weeks, I want to let you guys know, we are going to, at the end of the month, be finding out, um, our new colors for the refresh through, uh, Stampin' Up! here. Um, so that is going to be exciting. So I will keep you guys informed of that. I thought there was something else that I needed to show you guys. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it'll come to me if I see it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, I've got too many things on the mind and woo, goodness gracious. So welcome, you guys. I am Danny Garola with StampinThePinkBarn.com. I am so grateful for you guys to tune in here and watch this. I'm going to get you guys flipped around and we're going to get right into making cards. We're going to do the winners of last week's cards. That's always fun. I love sending you guys um, the creations that I make and hopefully it inspires you guys to get some cards made. It also gives you an opportunity to send your recipient or a friend or whatever family member a card that is homemade and you know, it's just, it kind of just perks other people's interest as well because they too can make just as beautiful cards. So, all right, I'm going to get you guys flipped around. So hold tight. Okay, there we go. I think we can see everything okay. All righty, you guys, let's get right into this. 
All the Little Things is the new paper pumpkin for April. Um, this is going to uh, be available through April 10th. Um, you can go ahead and click any of my links that say um, current paper pumpkin. It'll take you right in and you can look at this. If you visit my blog over at stampinthepinkbarn.com, go to the promotions tab and scroll down and you can read more details about this, all the little things, paper pumpkin. Now this month's kit is going to include um, enough supplies for nine cards. Three each of three designs, nine matching envelopes, iridescent foil die cuts, one shaded spruce ink spot, and one photopolymer stamp set. So one of the fun things about this is this is an all-exclusive kit. Everything that you're going to need besides maybe just a pair of, you know, snips, Otherwise, everything comes in this kit for you. You're going to get the ink pad. You're going to get a stamp, um, a full stamp sheet of, of some really exclusive stamps that you won't be able to find anywhere else. There's going to be little die cut images, and these ones are going to come with some iridescent foil die cuts. Um, this month's kit is especially, if I could find the right words, especially... Um, pretty cool and special because it is going to be coming with a box organizer. Okay, so that is probably one of the biggest questions I get from people is how do you store your little ink spots? Now these things are perfect for taking um, to any of your card classes that you go to, any of your swaps or anything like that. So um, these are perfect to go in this new kit. So myself i'm gonna say that this kit makes it worth it just for this organizer um because you figure you're gonna go to michael's and you're gonna spend you know on the upwards of what you're gonna get for this box and all you're getting is an organizer this you're gonna get a stamp set you're gonna get an ink you're gonna get all these supplies to make nine cards um so yeah so it definitely makes it worth it getting this kit so just wanted you guys to see that. Um, I have my adhesive kits for $30 right now. These are um, these kits are going to come with a bag. So it comes with a six inch clear ruler, the mini dimensionals, the regular size dimensionals, a mini or a, a green glue, the sand eraser, a adhesive remover, mini glue dots, and some tear and tape. So this is awesome. Again, all you need to throw in there is a pair of snips or your take your pick tool and you'll have everything that you need to go um, crafting on the go. Because of course, these are all the things that you're going to need to have on hand to create your beautiful cards. So again, you can follow the links on any of my blogs, uh, blog uh, posts that if you scroll towards the bottom, you'll see that where it says my adhesive kit. If you click on that, it'll take you right to the form to fill that out. All right. These are the retiring colors. These are the 2021, 2023 retiring colors um, for this year. These are the polished pink, pale papaya, evening evergreen, soft succulent, and fresh freesia. So if you don't have um, the refills, but you do have the ink pads, I'm going to tell you, you want to go ahead and place an order and get all of your refills um, because when they're gone, they're gone. They don't come back. Um, every once in a while, you might be able to find somebody selling them online, but it's probably safer to just go ahead and buy these while they're still available. Um, the stamp pads are are on low inventory right now so again grab those while you can all right because those are some beautiful beautiful colors so talking about the online exclusives we are going to be playing with the uh the rhino ready bundle so there's the stamp set and the dies and if you bundle it you're going to save 10 percent um so you can save yourself some money getting it that way so we're going to be playing with this super cute set right here um the other thing i want you to know and i'm sure you guys probably already know this especially a lot of you are demonstrators um the two circle punches are on back order 
or they're not even really on back order. They're not orderable, but they will come back in stock. Um, they did come in for a hot minute, but then they were gone just pretty much as quickly as they hit the store that they were back out because so, so many people were buying those. So I just wanted you guys to know that. So just know that these items are only going to be found in the online exclusives. So if you visit my store at shopdannygarola.com and you click the shop button in my, um, my website, it will take you right in and you're gonna see a little blip right in the middle of the screen that looks just like this. It's gonna be this, this peach color. If you click on the um, shop now or find out more, or whatever that little little sticker thing says in there, um, it'll take you right in so you can see all these items in there because these will not be found in any of our catalogs. I actually got the two inch punch, Sheila, and the very next day after I placed my order, it was out of stock. Oh, so I kind of snuck right in there and grabbed that um, before it was gone. So that's pretty cool. Also, um, what you're going to find in the online exclusive is you're going to find all of our kits. Now, this is kind of like a paper pumpkin, but you don't subscribe to this because your subscriptions are gonna to come to your mailbox every month. You do have the option to um, cancel a month or so if you want to put your uh, paper pumpkin on hold, you can absolutely do that. So know that you don't have to get every month's box when you subscribe. You can pick and choose what boxes you want when it comes to paper pumpkin. Now these here, if you go to that online exclusives and you scroll through the pages, I think it's like page two, you're gonna find all of our kits. Now these kits, you can buy them whenever you want. So um, with Paper Pumpkin, it only has a month duration and then once they are out of rotation, so again, the one that I just showed you is only good through April 10th. You have to um, subscribe by that time to be able to get that kit. These can be found in the store at any time point in time um, unless they sell out. That's the only other, uh, you know, um, whatever I'm trying to say. Oh, I don't know. Words are gone. Anyways, so um, disclaimer. There we go. That's the word that I was like, I kept th thinking disclosure and I was like, well, that's not right. Disclaimer. That's it. If it runs out of the store, then it is what it is. Um, but this kit right here is absolutely gorgeous. I also got this as well. Um, along with that two inch punch when I placed my order and this kit. So these also come in. Oh, I have to tell you guys. So um, I did like probably the worst no-no that I always tell you. I was, I was kind of being a hypocrite. Let me just tell you that way. Let's just be real here. So I had my cup of coffee sitting here on my desk. Um, I think it was Friday and um, I go, I clean my desk off and everything. I go to grab my cup of coffee and I get it right over my chair. And for some reason, my hand like just went, uh, just like stopped working. I dropped my cup of coffee on my chair, which then rolled off the side of the chair, hit the floor, coffee went everywhere. Like no joke. It is, I'm still finding spots of coffee on everything. So it went all over my wall over here. So I was scrubbing my wall off. It hit um, some of my scraps of cardstock. So I had to throw cardstock away. And I was like, you know what? This is what I tell people every time during my in-person classes is if you have a drink, I need you to set your drink um, on like, because normally we'll have it down at the um, local VFW and they serve um, alcoholic beverages. I mean, you don't have to have that there, but, um, and so I always make sure I tell everybody, have your drink sitting on a separate table um, because you never know if you go to stand up and you hit that table and it shifts or anything, your drink is gonna ruin your projects. Well, lo and behold, I did it. I, 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 I did it. <laughs> Just saying. So do beware that if you have your cup of coffee or tea or anything on your desk, be, be, be extremely careful. Don't do what I did. And I guess it was more of kind of a wake up call for me because on Thursdays, you guys know that I do my coffee and cards over on um, my live YouTube. Well, I always have my coffee or tea sitting here because that's kind of the whole premise of the show. We drink coffee and we make a card. 
Well, now we're going to have to probably move that cup of coffee somewhere else because I do not need that happening again. Like it was just stupid ridiculous, <laughs> but it was my own fault. So I can't be mad at anybody but myself. So just one of those things that I wanted to share with you guys. Make sure you don't have drinks on your desk because it happens to the best of us. So with this kit right here, the one that I was just telling you about, the Colorful Kaleidoscope, again, you can find this in my promotions under stampinthepinkbarn.com. Um, this one's going to come with a gray granite ink spot. You're going to get a three leaflet um, instruction page here. This is going to tell you exactly how to put these cards together. I mean, it goes into very deep details where they even show you where to put your strips of your adhesive, um, the little dimensionals that are going to pop things up. They're going to show you even where to place your um, little uh, embellishments. They have them on the center of this card here. So very, very, very easy to follow instructions because these are in color pictures so you see exactly what pieces they're using. They show you how to place your stamp, how to put the ink on the stamp, and then where to place it and what kind of tag to put it on. So these kits are amazing for that reason. I'm actually um, planning on doing um, for my team members, um, when we go to do our team meeting, we're going to actually do some fun things with some kits. So I cannot wait for our team meeting because we're going to have a lot of fun with these kits. So um, here's kind of the little labels that they give you. Just kind of show you really quick kind of what you get in one of these kits. And again, this is kind of what you're going to get in a paper pumpkin. You get everything you need. You have all these envelopes that you get. You have all your little die cut laser pieces that you need to make your cards the way that they're intended. If I can get these things unstuck. So you've got that, you've got the pink one. You've got the Bermuda Bay. And then these are the card bases that these are going to sit over the top of. Um, you've got the Knight of Navy, you've got the Calypso Coral, and you've got that gray granite. And then there is that stamp set that comes with all these sentiments on here. You also get, which you won't get in every one of your paper pumpkins, you're gonna only get it in your first paper pumpkin kit, is one of these clear um, acrylic blocks to mount your stamps. So you're only gonna get that in your very first paper pumpkin. Now in these kits, you're gonna get one of those clear blocks in every one of the kits that you purchase. So just know that. Okay, so that is the Colorful Kaleidoscope Kit. I couldn't say that real fast. Woo, that's a tongue getter right there. All right, so as I was saying, we are going to be using the Rhino Ready today. This is super, super cute. And here's the dies. I love that these dies create 3D um, background, like a, uh, a scenery image for you. There's some leaves, these tropical looking leaves. You've got these different kind of trees and we're going to play with all of these today to show you how cool these actually look on a card. But first, I forgot, we need to do our winners of last week's cards. So last week was episode 127 since today we are on 128th. So uh, these are the cards that we created last week. So let's get into this. So this one right here, I used the Regency Park um, Suite Collection. This one right here is very, very beautiful. I love this with that soft succulent. This is Let's Celebrate. Hello, Anna. Hello, Patty. Hello, Mike. So this one here, and that's what I did in the inside to bring those flowers into the inside of this card. This card is going to go to Miss Frida also for liking last week's video. So when you hit that little like button or you throw up the little hearts, that, that's what gets you in on um, one of my cards that we're giving away. 
The second card that I did was this kind of neat little fun fold. It just kind of is something just a little bit different to just kind of grab the eye. Um, this one here is going to go for commenting last week. So just come in here and comment. So um, just let me know where you're watching me from or just come in and say hi. And that gets you entered into the comment portion of the winning a card. So this one here is for um, happy birthday, dear friend. That's what I put on the front here, the sentiment. This is going to go to Noreen Bandiff. So Noreen, that card is going to be coming your way. And then the last card, this beautiful one right here. I just love these colors together. Now this card is going to go for sharing my video. So hit that share button right now and share my video. So people who are on your, um, your newsfeed can come in and join us if they wish. Um, so when you share my video, make sure in the comments you write the word shared. So I know that you have shared the video because depending on how your um, your settings and privacy is set up, it will not show me that you shared it. But I want you to be able to be entered into the sharing drawing for my cards. Um, so just come in and in the comments, which will get you entered in the comments um, portion of the giveaway, uh, then just come in and tell me that you shared it. So this one here is this gorgeous little jewel. Um, this is going to go to Linda Hunt. So Linda, this is going to come your way. And it's hard to see on here, but on those flowers, I put some Wink of Stella. So they kind of have just a little bit of shimmer and shine to those. So absolutely gorgeous cards. I'm so glad you guys enjoyed that video. You can also view that video over on my blog or it's over on my YouTube channel um, or it's here on my Facebook page. You just have to scroll down and you will find it down below somewhere. <laughs> I don't know where I post things all the time. So, all right. So let's go ahead and get into these Rhino Ready cards. So for our first card... I'm going to be using a little bit of balmy blue. I'm going to be using some classic matte dots. I'm also going to be needing a blender brush. And my card base, I am using, this is the um, Old Olive. I'm just going to fold this in half and burnish this. Make a nice crease in this card. Okay, so I'm just going to set that aside right now and get all my little pieces that I need. So for my next layers that I need, I have a piece of basic white here. This basic white is three and three quarters by three and a half. Now that's going to go on there like that. And then the next layer here is three and a quarter by three. And that is going to layer on the front of that. But we're going to do some fun things with this first. We're going to need a scrap of Old Olive. We're going to need a scrap of Mossy Meadow. And we're going to need some scraps of white. Okay. So I'm going to set all that aside. And we're going to go ahead and get into this. So I am bringing out my little... Uh, this is our piercing mat. So I just tape a piece of scrap paper to this and a piece of my hair. Huh. Okay, anyways. Um, and we're going to go ahead and use this to do some stamping so it doesn't make a mess on everything. So I'm going to lay my card base down and we are going to do some stamping on this first. So I'm going to grab this cool little greenery right here. It looks like some reeds of grass. Oh, look how clean my blocks are. Look at this. I washed all my blocks. Now, the best way to wash your blocks is your good old dishwasher. Yep, your dishwasher does wonders on your blocks. Look, this one's still even a little bit moist. We don't want any moisture on there. 
So I'm gonna come in with my Versamark pad. And I am just gonna start stamping this on here. No rhyme or reason, just kind of sporadically putting Now with Versamark, it starts getting darker as it dries. So just know that you will see the image the longer it sits on your paper. So Versamark is pretty much like a watermark. And so um, it just pulls the color out of the paper. So it's almost like a tone on tone. So I'm gonna bring this up a little bit so you guys can kind of see what it is doing to this paper. So see how you can see that image on there? It's very, very subtle, but as it dries, it's going to darken almost like water. Like if you were to spr spritz water on your paper, you're gonna see that water. But since this is, um, not going to dry completely and it is great for embossing but we're not going to emboss it we're just going to leave it alone and we're just going to let it dry on its own like that because that's going to be kind of our background image all right so then i'm going to take my smallest piece of basic white because i showed you these two layers here now the smallest one again is three and a quarter by three and we are going to do some blending on here to kind of give it that look of somewhat like a sky I guess you would say so I'm just going to take off some of that um, ink to just make it more of a softer look across here because I don't want it crazy dark but just enough to make it look like it is a skied image And you may not see much color on there, but you definitely see it once you stick it to that white um, layer over there. You're going to see more of that balmy blue look to this. And as I'm swirling, I kind of apply a little bit pressure here and there because I want it to look like they're almost like clouds sitting in the sky. So it's kind of a little bit whiter over here. It's a little bit whiter up here. That's kind of the look that I go for to give it a better, um, more realistic look. Now see, when you put that on something that is white like that, you can really see the blue kind of stand out. And so that's what we want. All right, then what I need to do is I need to die cut my images. I already have pre-done this so you guys don't have to sit around and wait for me to die cut everything. There are gonna be certain images we're gonna have to die cut because as I stamp my little rhinos, those have to be die cut as I, as I color them. So with my um, Mossy Meadow, I need to grab my, um, my uh, grass look of the meadows part. So I'm going to die cut the large one and the small one. Now these ones right here that have the little center swoosh, these are more for trees. That's kind of like the top of a tree. And then these two are more of like the ground. See how there's a straight edge? That's to set as your ground. So I'm gonna cut one of each one of those in mossy meadow. And then I'm gonna cut one of the small ones in my old olive. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my big leaf. These are two different sizes. They're pretty close, but this one's a little bit bigger than this one. I'm gonna do two of this leaf in Mossy Meadow, and I'm gonna do four of this leaf in the Old Olive, okay? Just so I tell you guys exactly what I'm doing. So then when you see these pieces come out here, you'll know what I'm talking about. just because there's so much to die cut that it would be forevers in a day. Okay, so there are my two pieces for the ground. And then there is my one piece, the short one in the old olive. There are all four 
of my old olive small leaves and then I have my two large leaves in the mossy meadow. So I'm just gonna set those aside. I'm going to grab my scrap piece of white and I need my Memento Black ink. And I am going to use I'm going to use the rhino right here that has the little tiny bird riding on his back. I think that is super cute. Okay, so grabbing my Memento ink. I'm just going to stamp this rhino. And then we're going to color him. Now make sure you use your Memento ink when you're using our um, blender pens because um, a lot of black ink will not cut it. Um, it'll wind up blend, it'll wind up smearing and um, kind of making a mess. Uh, it'll bleed because these are alcohol ink. So you want something that is going to be something like your Memento, which is a um, fade resistant dye ink. So it doesn't make a mess and bleed all over the place. Um, so I am using gray granite in my Stampin' Blends and my Smoky Slate to color this cute little rhino. So I'm gonna use the Smoky or yeah, the Smoky Slate to color his body. Is that the light? Yep, that's the light. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm just going to color his whole body. Now I'm just going to get him kind of saturated in the light color first and then I'm going to go in and that's when I'll do some of my shading and blending of the darker in here. So it looks like he's more of a realistic looking little hippo. Okay, so I'm going to keep it just like that. Then I'm going to grab my dark. And since Stampin' Up! already gives us these little tick marks on here, you can just kind of follow those along to do your shadowing. I'm going to shadow down here underneath his mouth, right here on his knees. This one I'm going to make kind of darker just because it's kind of shadowed by his body. I would assume his tummy is under him, so let's make that a little bit darker. And his bum... I'm going to add some shadowing kind of where this little bird is sitting. And then his tail is shadowing right there. And then his horn. Okay, then I'm going to come back in with my light and I'm just going to kind of blend that out. So then it doesn't look so crazy. And as it dries, you'll start seeing that kind of blend together better. Okay, and then with my dark and light gray granite, I'm going to come in with my light gray granite, and I'm going to do his horn. And then I'm going to do his little toenails.
And then I'm going to grab the dark. And then I'm just going to kind of darken up on those little tick marks. And the bottom part, the base of his horn. Ooh. And we're going to do his tail. Like that. All right, then I'm going to grab my light balmy blue and I am going to color this little bird. Now I was watching, I know this is not National Geographic that you're watching here, you're watching me make a card, but um, I was watching a documentary on like rhinos and stuff because I'm kind of a weirdo. But anyways, I was watching this documentary and there is actually a bird that sits on a rhino and it kind of lives with that rhino for a while. Um, and it actually eats the, oh, sorry, that was a uh, dark, um, or no, I grabbed the light daffodil delight, um, that the, uh, bird actually eats the insects off of the rhino to keep the rhino healthy. So it's kind of like they kind of, um, work together because he cleans the rhino, but it also gets the nutrients that the little bird needs to keep itself alive but yet he's protecting and keeping the rhino healthy too i know i'm a weirdo sorry just thought i would tell you guys that <laughs> just in case you wanted to know all right so now let's move some of this stuff around we're gonna go ahead and cut this cute little rhino out So all three of the rhino images can be die cut. So that is really cool. So I'm just going to lay this right on here. Line that up the best that I can. Just like that. Okay, there is our stinking cute little rhino. All right, let's start getting this card put together. Oops. Let me set this over here with my stamps so I don't lose anything. Also, we're going to be using the stylish shapes for our center. So I'm just going to set that aside until we get to that because we're going to go ahead and start putting this together first. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue that to this white layer. So this is a half an inch bigger than the white layer. Okay, now we're gonna bring in our little pieces here. And this one is gonna go right like that. Actually, I'm gonna cut off just a bit of this because I want it straight. I should have did that the this first before I glued it, but I didn't. All right, this one, I'm gonna cut off this little bump over here to make it straight. Okay, and then that's gonna get laid right there. Okay. 
Okay. Beautiful. All right. And then I'm going to take the small little, um, 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 whatever this is. And you know what? I screwed that up, but I have a way of fixing it. I needed this and I need my old olive. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take this and hold this here. And I'm going to go like this and like this. that and then I'm going to do it again and again and again there we go that's what I wanted I need to be able to see some of that grass coming up and it's okay that it is not showing down here because we're going to cover that so let's grab some of the mini dimensionals and I'm going to put a mini dimensional right on the back of this And then I'm gonna do one more right here in this little piece. Okay, and see this is gonna cover that little area so nobody's gonna see that that didn't stamp correctly. Okay, just like that. And then my Rhino is going to sit right there. Perfect. Okay, so let's tuck him right in there. Look at him just prancing along like he is just all that in a bag of potato chips. Cheery little guy. Then we can put this on our Card base like that. Okay, that's going to go right there. And I got a little bit of glue on there. So this is where our adhesive remover. Again, this comes inside of, you get one of these in your um, adhesive kit. Okay, so that's gonna go like that. And then, where are my leaves? So now we're gonna bring these leaves in. And we're going to put these leaves on here. So I am just going to put a little bit of glue up on the top there, and I'm going to place that one there. Now, these are the old olive ones. These are the smaller ones. That one's going to go there. All right, and then I'm going to take a mini and put it right up towards the top like that. And on this one as well. And then I'm gonna take this and kind of place it right in the center of those two. And same with this one, like that. Okay. Then now we need to grab my scrap here. Or actually, I'm going to use this scrap. I'm going to use this. And I am going to grab It's a Great Day. And I'm going to stamp that right on there in Memento. Just 
just like that. Okay, this is where the um, these stylish shaped dies are going to come in. I'm going to grab this long banner here. Now watch what I'm going to do with this. I can make this banner be whatever size I want to because if I did the whole banner, that is just way too long. I don't want it that long. So I'm going to manipulate this and cut it to the length I want it. So this is how you do that. You put your paper in there and you put it towards one end or the other where you kind of want it that length. Okay, like that. I'm gonna run this across here to hold that in place. Well, if I can get it straight. Okay, just like that. Okay, now we're gonna cut this. Okay, so there is our piece. Now that is just too long. And I went off the paper a little bit, but watch. Since it's got these little polka dots in there, this will then line up right in those little dots exactly how I want them. So once I find where I want it, I just center it back on those dots. And this side, since it's already been cut, it's not going to affect anything on that side. So now I can put that back in there and it's lined up with the dots across the top and the bottom. So I know that it's already straight because it wouldn't have um, kind of clicked all together like it did. Then once I cut that, just like that, I just ran that in through there. Now look, I have the perfect size little banner that I need and it doesn't have to be super long like it was in this. So see, that cut that down quite a bit. So I love that we can do that with these dies and make them the size that we want them instead of continuously buying and buying and buying more dies when you can manipulate the dies that you might already have to make whatever size you need. Okay, so let me get this put away. this back in okay and what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna pop it up on some dimensionals Okay, and then this is just going to get placed right down here, just like that. Isn't that so cute? Oh, I just love it. I think it turned out so cute. And then, because our little rhino is gray, and I just had my tape, oh, there it is. We are going to take some of these little gray now these are from the classic, um, classic matte dots. And then I'm just going to put this one right over there. There we go. Oh, what do you guys think of that? Isn't that just the cutest thing ever? I love this. And again, with a card like this and with this set, you can use this for so many occasions. Like this, I can totally see this as a, a birth announcement for a little boy um, or a little girl, whatever. Um, just the colors I think would be more maybe driven towards a little boy, but you know, you do what you want. It's kind of that little animal theme that I think is just adorable. You can give it as a, um, 
you know, bringing a baby into the world, not necessarily just an announcement. So just plenty of cards. It can be, it's a great day. It's your birthday. It's a great day. You retired today or what, you know, just so many things. And so all you would have to do is put in an inside sentiment to make this card go with whatever you need it for. So as always, I will take pictures once I get once this video is done, I will finish the inside of all three of these cards and that's when I will take photos of them. So then you can look over my blog tomorrow and see the insides of these cards, what I've done up in these. Now, I will tell you because this is going to be for one of you guys who um, like this video, I'm going to leave the inside blank as far as a sentiment. So then whoever wins this can put their own sentiment in the inside and make it be for whatever occasion they want it to be. Okay. So that is card number one. All right. So let me get stuff for card number two. Okay. Card number two, 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 two. All right, card number two, we're going to be using some Mossy Meadow. Well, you know what, Nancy, you are very welcome for me turning you on to this set now. <laughs> and that was only the first card. Wait till you see a couple of these other cards. You are just going to, you know, be head over heels and you're going to want this set. Okay, so I am using Mossy Meadow. This is, um, which I forgot to tell you on the last one, but this is uh, eight and a half by five and a half. And we're just going to fold it in the middle. And find my, there it is, bone folder and burnish that down. So that is our card base. Now with this card, we're going to be going this way. We're going to be going landscape style. Let me get some of these stamps out of the way. Um, let's see, our next layers that we're going to need. This is basic white. Um, this is four by five and a quarter. This will be our next layer to go on here. Okay, then actually, you know what? I wanted to tell you guys a secret. This is not basic white. I fibbed. So I buy off of Amazon, which again, I shop coffee everywhere. So I can't guarantee you guys that there's not any coffee on everything. So I, I'm kind of a, I, I use a cheater method. So I buy this big thing of um, 65 pound um, bright white paper. Now, if I know that I'm going to be covering a big sheet like this primarily with another paper I'm not gonna waste my basic white it's just my thing I am I'm kind of a cheap cheapskate so the way I do it is I just use a piece of that thin stuff because my basic white I want to use for stamping and I want it to be more of a focal point now this is gonna be covered up the majority of it because my next layer that I'm bringing in is five by three and three quarters so watch all you're going to see is just that little bit so why do I want to waste my good paper that is a perfect paper for stamping images on to just use it for the back of a base of a card I don't know. I mean, you do you, but I'm just, I'm kind of frugal. And so I want my good, nice paper to be used for what it's for. And I can use a cheaper paper that I can get in a huge, huge pack to just be covered up like this. And nobody's going to know, but you guys. <laughs> okay. So let's get, okay. So that is our base. Now I am going to be using the, uh, where did I put them? These right here, these are the layering diorama dies. So what I did is I grabbed the third one in. Okay, so this one right here and my mossy meadow. And I cut out that image from the mossy meadow. And when I do, I get this right here. I get that piece. Okay. So it almost looks like a puddle, right? Okay, so my puddle is going to go right like that. That's going to be the center of my card. Then I need some pear pizzazz. Now my pear pizzazz are going to be for my tree pieces here. 
So I have cut, I have cut my large tree die out of pear pizzazz. And when I do, I get that piece there. I have come in with the large grass area or the bushes and that is right there. This is all with pear pizzazz. Then I need a scrap of early espresso. And when I do, I'm going to use this tree right here. Well, it's not really the tree, but it's the bark of the tree, the branches. And when I cut that out, I'm going to get my tree right there. Now this tree is very dainty. So these are very thin. You have to be very careful when you're pulling that off of your um, cutting plate so you don't tear that. Okay, so we needed um, that, 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 and then um, we need some scraps of basic white. Now this is where I'll bring my basic white in because we're going to be doing some um, stamping on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and glue these two pieces together. Now this designer series paper right here, this comes from the... Uh, I said I was going to remember it and I didn't. See there? Hold on and I'll grab it. It's right here. I think it's called Hap... Mm, no, I don't want to say that because I don't know what it's called. It is the Happy Forest Friends. Now this is in the annual catalog. So that is why I use this. Um, where did I post the mystery stamping? So you can find it on my blog at stampinthepinkbarn.com. Here, let me move this so you guys can see. Um, stampinthepinkbarn.com right here will tell you everything, um, how to submit your card. It has the replay video on there. So run this all together without any spaces and then do .com. And that will get you, if you can see this right here, I know it's a little bit little, but um, that, and then there's a tab across the, um, right after you see my heading right below that, it'll say mystery stamping. And if you click on that, it'll take you right into um, what you need and the replay video and all the supplies that I used. Um, so you can get those. Uh, and then it'll take you over to my group. If you're not a part of the group, it will take you right into my group and then all you have to do is hit that join button. Clearly, I can't do it while I'm in the middle of this video, but then when I'm done, I will go check it. And um, once you um, get in the group, you have to look for the photo of the card that I made, which is right, well, I thought it was right here. Well, I don't know where it is. I have the darn card sitting here, but I don't know what I did with it. Anyways, you'll see it in the video and um, you can go over to Pink Barn Stampers group. And once you find the photo of mine, it's in the featured section, but find my card on there and then add your card to the comments. Other people have added their cards in there. So you'll see that they've placed theirs. I don't know where that card went. I would show you, but I don't know where it's at. Okay, so back to this. Um, if you have any more questions, message me and I'll send you direct links to um, where you need to find it. Um, because I do know that when I posted the video that I did on Wednesday night, it didn't come through on Facebook. So I had to repost it from Facebook or from YouTube. So you'll see the video on there. I'm sitting there with my graphic that says mystery stamping. So if to find the video. Okay, so where was I? Okay, that, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do some stamping on here. All right, so let's grab the rhinos here. And I am going to use this little cutie who's just sitting here being so good. So let's grab this rhino. And we're going to also use the little bird. So I'm going to put the little bird just on one of my small blocks and we'll stamp it too because we're going to die cut both of those. So let me grab my memento. We're going to stamp the hippo. Hippo? I mean rhino? That is not a hippo. FYI, 
hippos are not horny, right? I mean, yeah, hippos are not horny. Rhinos are horny. Yeah, let's not get the two twisted here. It's kind of like calling that an elephant. Yeah, they're not horny. Okay, so here's our guy. We're going to use the same colors here because it just seems like I like my... Okay, that's gray granite, smoky slate. These things are so close in color. I really have to watch these. All right, so this is the light smoky slate. And again, I'm just going to come in here and color him all up in light. I know you guys, I get really, really quiet when I'm coloring because it's almost like chewing gum and walking. I just can't do both. So if I'm trying to talk and color, it's like I can't do it. My brain doesn't want to function. Yes, I'm, I'm going to tell you guys this, that um, since menopause has kicked in, or perimenopause, whatever it's called, as Wendy says, mental pause, um, this, this brain of mine has like went to goo. I am seriously having the biggest struggle with my brain, and I know I tell you guys this all the time, and you guys are probably like, shut up, lady, get over it, we all go through it. You're right, we do, but good Lord. Sometimes I'm like, you know what? To be a guy would be fabulous. But then again, I think about that and I'm like, no, I would not want to be a guy, but whatever. They've got struggles too. I definitely would not want to have to work like my husband works. I will say that. My husband is um, six years younger than me. And he is constantly, because of the job that he does, he does a lot of lifting and he's been with the job for over 25 years now. It is definitely taking a toll on his body. And I tell him, I go, you're even younger than I am, but I don't do any of the physical stuff like he does. Granted, yes, our daughter, um, I do do a lot of lifting with her. But as I'm getting older, I'm realizing I need to be more cautious of my back. So I'm starting to train myself to lift her different ways so I don't hurt myself. But yeah, it's just, it's crazy. I mean, I love the fact that he has such good ethics and he takes care of his family. But man, is he damaging his body doing the job that he does. But once you've been doing it for so long, it's kind of hard to just walk away from something that, you know, you've already got an investment in and all that kind of stuff. All right, coming back in with the, what was this one? The light gray granite, and we're going to do his horn. And the toenails. You're right. There is a lot going on in my life right now. Um, I don't want to say that, you know, we don't all have a lot going on in our lives. I'm no different than anybody else. You know, when things go on, it all goes on at once, I suppose. But yeah, that probably has a lot to do with it, too. My brain is just going a million miles an hour and then trying to keep up with everybody's appointments that are going on. That's the other thing, too, that I'm like, well, yeah, you know. Okay, grabbing the, no, not pool party. I really like 
the um, balmy blue. This is the light balmy blue for this little bird. I think he is just so cute. And the balmy blue. He's like a little blue jay. Now, I don't remember what the name of that bird is that sits on their back. I'm trying to remember. It's got a goofy name. And then let's take some daffodil and do his little, his little pecker. His beak, pecker, whatever you want to call it. Um, I guess that's not his pecker. That might be, yeah. Okay, I'm going to come back in the, with this light and kind of go over that just a little bit more to blend that out. Okay, so now we're going to die cut both of these. We're going to shut this so I don't stick my arm in it. Okay, let's put these on here. Grab the dies. Okay, here's the sitting rhino, and here's the little bird. See, there's even a die for that bird. Isn't that the cutest? Now, definitely be careful with your bird so you don't lose him because he is tiny. And I can see how he could probably disappear very easily. And then you will be grabbing the industrial magnet and creeping all over your floor searching for it. Because I wouldn't know that or anything because I've never had to do that. <clears throat> yeah. I actually found a die that I didn't even know that had disappeared one day doing that <laughs> all of a sudden i pull the magnet up and lo and behold i have a die that i wasn't even looking for but now i have that die back okay let's grab this hippo Okay, there's that. There's our bird. Let's close this so I don't lose any of these. All right, let's bring this in and put this together. All right, that's going to go right there in the center. So I'm just going to go ahead and adhere that straight down. Okay, that's going to go like that. I'll try to turn that just a little bit. All right, I'm just going to dry fit these things on here to see what I think. Like that. This is going to go like that. Okay, that needs some dimensional, so let's pop him up. I'm going to go ahead and glue this down and I'm just going to glue this bottom portion of this maybe because when I put my top on there it'll all be just fine and dandy okay it needs to come down just a hair Yep, okay, now I'm gonna put some mini dimensionals on the back of this. And then that tree topper is gonna hang just like Uh -huh. 
that. Okay. Move this down just a little bit more. Okay. There we go. Then this guy is going to sit right like right like that. Okay. Where you can still kind of see the tree, but it's kind of looks like it's sitting behind him. Then I'm going to grab this and tuck that in behind him. So that's just going to slide right in there like that. Okay. And our little bird. But first, we need to take a scrap piece of white. And I am going to grab... The little word that says hello friend and my mossy meadow oh I bought a new mossy meadow hold on I need the new one because this one I think is time to go in the garbage I don't know what the deal is I don't know why it's not holding ink it's just being doesn't want to play nice so I had to buy another one okay so do you guys know I don't have it done on this one but this is a good good time to show you on the back here we've got the words in different languages so what I do is I pull this up and I grab the one that's in my language Okay, and on the front of your pad right here where you see this little this little open divot right here, that's for your thumb to flip that open. This little label goes right in the front. So when you store them, you can see your words because when they're all stacked together like that, you're not going to see what they are. So this way you'll see that that's Mossy Meadow. Then... There is one little label down here that doesn't have any words or anything to it. I'm going to pull that off. Now you can pull this whole piece off and toss it at this point if you don't need that. I just leave it there because it's not hurting me. This little strip right here I put in here. And this little divot. Because if I had multiple um stamp set set out at this point i can't tell what is what so this way if i saw the strip like this one i never did but the strip would show me okay cool that's mossy meadow oh much better Okay, then I'm going to bring back in those, oh, what did I do with them? Oh, they're underneath here. And bring back this, this one more time. Okay, set this up there. Then this time, I'm going to come in with a really tiny little one because it fits this sentiment almost like it was meant to go in this die. Okay, like that. Ah, come on. See how perfect that fits in there? And then I didn't have to adjust anything. It's like it was meant to be, like a glove. All right, this, I'm gonna put some mini dimensionals on. And then I am going to grab 
thought I had them sitting out. I'm gonna grab my solid faceted gems and we're gonna put one of those in here. Okay, the Hello Friend is gonna go right like that. Okay, ooh, my goats are outside being crazy. Do you hear them jumping all around? Then that little bird is gonna get a dimensional up on that. And then it is going to be as if, oops, get off of there. As if it is sitting right up on the corner of that little tag. <laughs> okay, let's grab this and my take your pick. And I'm going to grab one of these little small ones. And I'm going to put that right there. Just one. I think one is all that needs because that little scenery and landscape just does that card enough that I don't need to add a whole bunch of other stuff. And so this would be a perfect masculine card. Okay. Just like that. Oops, I have some glue in there. I just saw it shine. So I'm going to use this and just goober that right out. Whoops. Being very careful not to destroy my tree. There we go. That's much better. All right. There is card number two. What do you guys think of that? Isn't that adorable? Love it. And of course, that paper, that um, Hello Friend, Hello Forest, or Happy Forest Friend, just grabs all these colors and really kind of ties it together. But again, this can be done in so many different colors. I just thought that was so cute. And I've been wanting to play with that uh, diorama. And so I thought it worked perfect with that. So that is card number two. Okay, let me move some of this stuff around. Oops. Okay, let me grab this. So with this one, we're going to be using some of these Glossy Dots assortments. And we're going to be... Now this is our basic gray. This is 11 by 4 and a quarter. And I've scored it at 5 and a half. And now we're going to fold that and burnish it. Just like that. So this is going to be the way our card opens like this. Then we need, so I'm bringing in, I haven't used this in a long time. This is the Lovely Layers Vellum. This already comes in three and three quarters by five size. So there is a ton of vellum in this. You get 60 pieces of this little vellum. So I'm going to use a sheet of this one right here. So it, as you can see, it's vellum, so you can see through it. So that is going to be one of my layers. I'm also going to be using, now this is basic white. This is um, five by three and three quarters. Now we're going to do um, some something to this. I'm going to bring this back over. I'm going to grab my blending brushes again. And the color that I'm going to use for this is Granny Apple Green, Coastal Cabana, and Crushed Curry. Okay, and then I am going to also be using the second 
maybe if I can get the darn thing out of there, the second from largest square, and I need a, a scrap piece of basic white, again, using basic white, and I'm gonna die cut that out, and when I do, I get this little square right here. So I'm gonna set that aside, because we're gonna be doing, um, while I have all my supplies up here, we're gonna be doing something with that. So using my stylish shape dies again for that little square. All right, let's go ahead and get started with this. So this is where I need to move all this stuff out of the way so I can get my stamp pads up here. So Coastal Cabana. So see how I have the little strip in there? And then I have Crushed Curry. Isn't that Crushed Curry? Yeah. And I have my Granny Apple Green. Okay, so starting with my Coastal. I'm going to do Coastal up at the top. I know I flipped this around so it looks like it's the bottom, but that's really going to be the top. Ooh, hold on, you guys. I need... It's going to get loud for just a second. Those things are sticking to everything. So I'm going to kind of make this dark. So applying quite a bit of ink to that. So I'm going to go like a third of the way up or down because this is supposed to be the top. Okay. Then I'm going to grab my yellow. So this is my crushed curry. Okay, and then grabbing my granny apple. So it looks like grass, the sky the sun and then the high sky there. Kind of, sort of. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing with this, but I am going to, this is going to go on my card like a diamond. Shine bright like a diamond. Okay, so doing kind of the same thing. That looks like I'm drunk because it's not even very straight. <laughs> I promise I'm not drunk. I might be a little crooked, but I'm not drunk. That is one thing I never, ever really took up was drinking. That was never my jam. I mean, don't get me wrong. When I turned 21, I went out and had fun with my friends, but it was not something I ever really enjoyed doing. A, 
I'm kind of, well, I guess this is kind of contradicting, but um, I kind of felt like I didn't want to spend that much money and just go put it in the toilet because I might as well just take money and stick it in the toilet at that point because that's all you're doing is peeing it back out. So what's the point of drinking all that if you're, yeah, you're drunk for a little bit, but then you wake up and you feel like turd. So I just didn't see a point in it. Okay, so this is where we're going to come in with this piece. Now, what I'm going to do with this is I am going to take my um, stamp and seal and I'm just going to take it right down the center just like that and then a little point up there maybe if I can get it to work just a little tiny point up there and a little tiny point down here and you'll see why in just a minute because you know with vellum you don't ever want to see the adhesive sticking through because that's not attractive so this way, yes, you see it under that, but remember we have this fancy little piece right here. Well, we're going to stick that on top of that so you're not even going to see that adhesive underneath there. So make sure that's good and stuck so that holds that in place. And then we are going to be grabbing some scraps. So we're going to be grabbing a piece of well, we're gonna need a scrap of white for our image that we're going to die cut we're going to use granny apple green and we're going to use coastal cabana so with the coastal cabana I am going to die cut the second no the third largest circle I'm gonna die cut that out of there. And when I do, I'm going to, now you that's using those stylish shapes again. You would never know that I like stylish shapes, right? It just works so well on all of these cards. So then I'm gonna get that circle right there out of my Coastal Cabana. I'm also going to take this little tiny hat. It's like a little birthday hat. I'm gonna do that out of Coastal Cabana. And I am going to get My little hat okay and then with the granny apple green I'm going to do one of the big leaves and two of the small leaves so when I do I come out with this and those bright look at those colors together isn't that just in your face I love it I love it I love it okay and then where did my base go so let's start getting this done so I'm gonna move this out of the way this is all gonna go on that basic gray so let me get that out of the way um, let's not lose our pieces so we'll leave that there move those um, we're gonna stamp on this circle I'm gonna put hope your birthday is wild that's such a cute little sentiment and we're going to use Memento for that. Put that right in the center of that circle. Now since that paper doesn't quite hold ink like the basic white, I'm going to hold that so it definitely gets adhered into that paper, kind of marinates. Oops, I need that open still. Then we're gonna use our last little um, rhino here. We're gonna stamp it on this basic white. Okay, then I have the little tootie blowhorn thing. Now, when I showed this to my husband, he didn't like the little horn, so. You guys are going to be the ones who pick whether or not the little tootie horn thing goes on there or not. He said it looks a little hokey, but I don't know. We'll see. All right, let's get this colored. Um, bringing in the same colors again. Why not? It just goes very well with this little guy.
I just love these little rhinos. Aren't they just so cute? Oh, love it. Then again, I, I am a sucker for stamps that are like little animal characters. They're just kind of my thing. Even though the flowers are kind of growing on me, I'm, I'm just really into the little animals. Okay, there's that. Let's do the dark. I come in here to his mouth under his little chin here. belly this one I'm just gonna do all dark because that foot is hiding come around his bum his horn okay come back in with the light Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my light pale pink. Now, you don't have to do this. I just kind of like the little cheekies. And then I take my light um, smoky slate and I just kind of rub over that one more time. Just kind of soften those cheeks a little bit and then we're going to do the same thing that we did before do the horn and the hooves and the tail Okay, and with this little tootie blow thing, I'm gonna do light daffodil delight. And then I'm gonna use the light um, Bermuda Bay. Okay, so what we need to do is cut these out with our dies. So we've got the little blowhorn, tooty thing, whatever that thing's called, and then our other little rhino. Party blower or something like that, I don't know what it is. Okay, and then this thing.
let's bring this in and do what we're gonna do here with this I'm just gonna go ahead and put this on and since my stamp and seal is sitting right here we're just gonna go ahead and go with it now making sure my my uh, Bermuda or Coastal Cabana is up towards the top like that this will be our next piece so I'm going to add the little hat just a dot of glue on that I'm going to sit right like that on his head Okay. All right, this I'm going to put dimensionals on. Now again with that up top, I'm going to place this in the center. Okay, that looks good. This will go here. I'm turning that hat just a skosh. Okay. This little piece is going to go right here, so let's pop that up also. So what I want to do is just throw that there, and then put a little bit of glue right there. And then this is just going to get laid right like that. Okay. That will go there. And then we will place our little things here. Okay, this guy is going to go straight down onto that little diamond. And I'm going to put a little small dimensional on that hat. Okay. Right like that. Hold that a few seconds. This is where... I put the little tootie horn like that, and my husband was like, no, he didn't like it. So that's where you guys get to decide, yes on the little party favor blow horn or no. You guys tell me yes or no. Whether you like it or you don't. And I'm going to go ahead and attach these while you guys are deciding whether you like that there or not. So that's, if you say no, it's going to look like that. If you say yes, it's going to be added like that. I sure do see a lot of no's. <laughs> so you guys all agree with my husband. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Maybe it needs to go over here. I don't know. He just said, he goes, no. He goes, that just looks very hokey. <laughs> he goes, it looks very out of place. All right. Well, then we will not put the horn on because it looks like no, no, no. 
he'll be happy to know that you all agreed with him. I will definitely make sure I let him know. <laughs> Can you try the other side of his mouth? Like that? That's what I was thinking. I don't know. It just, I mean, I'm sure that's probably how it's supposed to go. But, I don't know. Alright, we're just going to take it off. We don't need to worry about that. I'll have to play around with that and figure out how it needs to go on there. But for right now, we're not going to stress about it. Okay, and that's going to go there. Hubby wins. Well, we won't tell him that at the moment. That'll go straight to his head. Because he's always like, I can't make a card. I can't do any crafting. But then, boy, he sure does have something to say when I have a card that he doesn't like. Oh, my goodness. He's the first one to point out any kind of flaws. Well, doesn't that look like whatever? And I'm like, okay, well, yeah. Okay, let's put some of these glossy dots on here. I'm going to put, I think, the big one. Or no, the medium one. Come here. The medium one's going to go right in the center of the little hat. And then we will do a big one. If I can get it off of here. Right here. And then the little one. Right on that leaf. There we go. So isn't that so cute? So here's the other one that I made with the little horn thing. And I used a couple of different little um, embellishments. But I did not like that those were not bright enough. So that's when I saw the, of course... I love these glossy dots and that holographic kind of look that they have to them. I knew it would be more kind of a bling on this besides these ones. These are okay, but I definitely like this better. And this one I did a lot softer and I like the more deeper colors to this one. I did it a lot darker and I think it turned out a lot better. So. All right, there is card number three for you guys. All right, I will bring these back in in just a minute. But like I told you guys, I want to show you guys the uh, beautiful cards that all of my team members, I know some of you guys are on here, have sent me over the last week. So this one here is from Sheila. Miss Sheila Isley. This is absolutely beautiful. I love this paper. Oh, I so wish, wish it was frosty and beautiful here like that. But it's not. It was like 74 today, but we were overcasty. And, uh, but it was warm and yucky. So isn't that just gorgeous that she made for me? So thank you so much, Sheila. Gorgeous, gorgeous. This is from um, Robin Shanks. This is using that um, Celebrations paper. It says, with deepest sympathy. These colors are so rich and beautiful together. Um, she did a little inside here. Sending loving thoughts and prayers. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay, then we have, this is from D. Esplana. And I love the colors on this one. Absolutely love that. And that's from that, uh, what is that paper called? That paper is the Fancy Flora paper. And it looks so gorgeous the way that she cut that on that scallop. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, so that is from D. And if you are a part of my team, you know that on our team page over on our creative group, um, there is a upcoming swap coming up. We do it every month. Um, 
And uh, it's all about the swap is about sympathy cards. So it's a great way to get your hands on a lot of sympathy cards and have those on hand. If you ever need to send a sympathy card out and you don't have one handy, it's always awesome to join my team and be a part of that swap. Um, it's almost like Christmas when you get all these cards in the mail. Um, here is another one. This one is from Polly Libby. This is so gorgeous. I love how this is all cut out of that paper. Again, that is another one of those celebrations. And look, she even used the keys from that uh, paper pumpkin that we had and then did the diagonal cut. Yes, sympathy cards are absolutely hard. You are darn right, Rhea. And that's why I thought, you know what? I should probably join this swap. Um but I didn't get in in time because I know today was the cutoff um, because I've got too much going on in life that I didn't want to sign up for it and then not be able to get enough cards done. So unfortunately, I'm not in this swap for this month, but I definitely wanted you guys to know that these cards are so much um, inspiration. Not these ones here. These ones were sent personally to me. But when you do a swap, you get all these cards in the mail and it gives you so much inspiration. It's just so fun to join something like that. But this card here is from Polly Libby and she did that little strip of that paper and that as well. So gorgeous, gorgeous. It made my heart happy to see all these cards in the mailbox the other day. <laughs> Okay, this one is from, uh, this is from Sarah Thibodeau, I believe is how you say the last name. I'm probably just slaughtering her last name, but she knows who she is. This is that paper again from, um, what did I say that was? The Fancy Flora paper. And she carried that into the inside. So beautiful. I love this nesting thing. And I wish we still had those around. But this one is from Patty Skiba. Look at that. Isn't that so gorgeous? Now this is from the... What is that called? Not Forever Fern. Oh, uh, Nature's Prince. That's what this is from beautiful card and I love the fun fold like this that covers that so that's from Patty then this one's from Ruth Gerarda and look at that she white embossed that with that powder embossing on there absolutely gorgeous and this is that new in color that starry sky Beautiful, beautiful card. Then we have this one. This is from, let me open it up. Wait till you guys see this one. This is gorgeous too. This is from Susie. So look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Those rich colors and then this uh, black scalloped frame back here is just beautiful. Love this card. I mean, I love them all, don't get me wrong, but I just love this rich, rich color from this one. So yeah, she co covered that in the inside too. So isn't that just beautiful? So hopefully that gives you guys some inspiration to, um, if you have to make any sympathy cards, you can maybe get something from one of those. Like I said, or like Rhea said, sympathy cards are hard to make for more reasons than one. Um, you know what you're making it for and it's just it's not a fun thing to make but they are truly beautiful and I honestly think that sympathy cards need to be kind of on the simple side because you don't want them all blinged and crazy because again you know what they're for <laughs> so beautiful beautiful cards okay let me bring my three cards back in using this beautiful set or not beautiful but cute set so you guys can kind of see those all at once and so again don't forget to get your cards submitted over um on pink barn stamper set your mystery stamping cards um those need to be in um photos need to be taken and on the pink barn stampers group by the 22nd and i will not be announcing the winner to um of that until later in the after or evening 
So you have pretty much all day Wednesday to get your card submitted. We have to drive up to Phoenix and take my daughter up to Phoenix Children's Hospital and um, she needs to have a swallow study done. So I will draw the winner um, probably after we leave the hospital. Um, so that's always fun taking that drive because it's about a five hour round trip drive um, up to Phoenix and back here. But um, we definitely need to find out what's going on with her gagging issue that she has. So um, just to let you guys know that you'll have all day Wednesday if you don't get it done tomorrow. So yes, you get this set on Friday, Win Wendy. That is awesome. Yes, you're going to have so much fun playing with this. It was, it was a lot of fun. I sat down, actually, I think it was on Friday. And I kind of nailed this one out. And then, um, and then on... No, Friday I did this one too. Saturday I sat down and I did this one. I just was like, things had to start going through my mind. Thank you, Rhea. Yes, we will be careful. Um, I I hate that corridor going through um, here in Phoenix because when it drops down to two lanes and if there's an accident on that road, you're kind of screwed. And we have to be there by 10 o'clock in the morning. So we'll have to leave here roughly around like 7.30, 8 o'clock. And then um, once we get uh, through that corridor. Um, the hard thing is, is she has to be fasting. So, uh, that's going to suck, but thank God that hospital has a really good, uh, cafeteria in it. <laughs> so then she can eat after her swallow study. So yeah, that's always fun. I, I hope we get some am answers, Wendy. I mean, that's the biggest thing is, is when you have a child who is um, disabled and they can't talk and can't tell you anything about how they're feeling, it is the most horrible feeling to not know. I mean, a lot of us can say, oh my gosh, my stomach hurts, or oh my gosh, my throat hurts, or you know, anything like that. But when you have a kid that can't tell you anything, it, it's, really, it's really tough. So she has a talking device. And we are trying to teach her because it reads the retinas of her eyes. So when she looks at her device, it'll see her eyes and pick up what she's trying to say. But again, it's a learning lesson because it's just kind of like people who are deaf and they have to learn ALS. It's um, or ASL, ASL, American Sign Language, not ALS, different, different thing. So ASL, when they're learning that, I mean, they have to learn a whole new way of talking. It's kind of like learning a whole new language. So that's kind of like with her. She has to now talk with her eyes on a device. So it's kind of hard on her. So it's a, a, definitely a process that she has to learn. And then on top of that, she has to learn how to express her feelings and how she's feeling and what is what does it mean to be in pain and where is that pain generating from? Like she could tell us it's her mouth, but okay, what does that mean? Does that mean she has a canker sore? Does that mean her tooth is hurting her? You know, there's a million things that now how do we break down my mouth hurts and then what is it that is actually hurting? So, you know, it's just all these things that she has to learn and then we have to learn how to um, kind of take her cues on how she's feeling. So whatever. I mean, it's just one of those things and we all just kind of work with her and try to get her to learn how to communicate in her way and tell us what is going on with her body. Otherwise, we take her to the doctor and that is how they look with x-rays and scopes and all sorts of good stuff that we have with modern technology. So <laughs> okay, you guys, thank you so much for sticking with me tonight and spending these last two hours with me. I hope you enjoyed these cards. I know I enjoyed making them for you. I absolutely love this set. And again, this is in the online exclusives. So you can follow my links and go straight to my store, shopdannygorolla.com. That'll take you in my store. When you shop with me, at the end, when you add everything to your cart, as long as your order is under $150, please use my host code. That's what helps me be able to bring all these free videos to you and to be able to do the giveaways for mystery stamping and to be able to give away all three of the cards that I have made. It truly helps me a lot. Thank you guys so much again and look forward to announcing announcing the winner of all of you who have submitted cards um, for mystery stamping. And I will see you guys back here on Thursday or not on here, but on um, 
Yes, I started at six. Yes, because now that we are on Pacific time, I start at six o'clock because during the winter hours when I am on um, mountain time, I start at seven to still keep me six, seven, eight, nine to keep my times right. I just hope that this daylight saving thing ends and they actually pass that bill to make it where it's not like that. So then I don't have to keep flip flopping my Arizona time to um, everybody else's time. So, all right, you guys, take care of yourselves. Have a wonderful week. Take um, good care of yourselves. Be safe if you have to travel anywhere. And I will see you guys on Thursday at noon um, Pacific time over on my YouTube channel. All right, you guys, bye.